gracious good day to one and all once again, tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States, and Protector of Mexico, back with you once again, and as we are every Saturday, we welcome our extra special guest superstar, the Countess Lola Montez. Good, good morning, morning, all, and thank you for joining us, good and day, good Countess. to see you, Your Majesty. So Thanks. this is episode number 104. Today is July 25th, 2020. It is our 130th day under COVID-19 restrictions. How are you today, Countess? Well, it's splendid, I must say, and in good health, which ah, is important. Yes, in these days, yes. yes. We should not take it for granted. Never, Each never. day is a new day, a new beginning. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so uh, today we have some surprises as well. So I want to let the viewers know you can comment. And especially I want to do a shout out to the uh, downer Laura Amster. You have requested you would like to see the Countess in pink and that I never stand up. Well, due to the restrictions of the filming, we are in limited shelter in place. That doesn't mean I can't stand once in a while. So I will now stand and show off my pink outfit as per your request. So I hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Oh, Countess, that's lovely, as always. Thank you, and thank you. Anyone else has any requests, you know, feel free to send it in. We are here but to serve. Yes, indeed. indeed. Yes. Well, I'm starting a support group for women that can't reach orgasm. What's that? If you can't come, let me know. <laughs> How many country singers does it take to change a light bulb? Why, I don't know. Two. One to do it and one to sing it a song about all the good times they had with the old light bulb. <laughs> what do you get when you play country music backwards? I have no idea. You get the wife back, the dog, and the truck. Oh. <laughs> you know, you might be a redneck if you recognize your friends by the sounds of their mufflers. <laughs> a man I know went in for his annual physical and the doctor said, I see that you're circumcised. No, that's just wear and tear. <laughs> You heard the one about the blonde that went into the library and she went up to the front desk mm -hmm. and she says, I'll have an order of Coke, fries and a burger, please. And the librarian says, Madam, this is a library. And the blonde whispers, I'll have an order of Coke, fries and a burger. <laughs> Well, looking in the mirror, the wife complained to her husband that her breasts were starting to sag, her skin was getting wrinkly, and her butt was too big, and she asked if he could give her a com compliment to cheer her up, after which he replied, well, at least there's nothing wrong with your vision. <laughs> So today, moving on to a more serious topic, we have a person of note in history in the Bay Area, in San Francisco, and that would be Charlie Parkhurst. Have you ever heard of Charlie Parkhurst, Your Majesty? I've heard of Charlie Parker. No, not the jazz musician. Oh. I do love Charlie Parker's oh, yes, music, yes. Indeed. Yes, indeed. But I wanted to share some notes. I was doing a little research on it and of uh, a true hero of the West, Charlie Parkhurst, and was a stagecoach driver and arrived in San Francisco the years after the gold rush. Mm -hmm. Now, Charlie loved working with horses and got a job working on the stage lines between San Francisco and Salinas, California. Charlie was awed by this 
you know, he would all, all the stable boys and other drivers, they admired his work. And Charlie Parkhurst was one of the most skillful stagecoach drivers at the time. Charlie was nicknamed One-Eyed Charlie or Cockeyed Charlie. Due to a time in Redwood City, Charlie was shooing his lead horse, Pete. And when the horse kicked him in the face, it resulted in an episode that Charlie lost an eye and wore an eye patch there on out hmm. the duration of his life. Now, um, there was a lot of mystery surrounding Charlie's life. Truth be told, Charlie was born in Lebanon, New Hampshire in 1812 and was raised in an orphanage until he ran away. And then Charlie found work in a stable owned by Ebenezer Balch in Worcester, Massachusetts. Now, Charlie was put to work cleaning the stables and the stalls and washing carriages and scrubbing the floor. And Charlie loved being with the horses and learned a great deal in the stable. Now, the stage drivers drove from Concord to Worcester, which Charlie loved to watch and learn. Now, Charlie's boss, Ed Balk, was impressed with the promise of the young protege and taught Charlie the art of driving in hand, then four in hand, and finally six in hand horse teams. Mm. Now, Charlie started driving to places like the state of Georgia, and on one trip, he met a man, Jim Birch. Now, Jim was going west to California to start up the California stage line, and Charlie started driving on the Pocheco Pass run, and then for the Danford Porter lines that connected with the Santa Cruz stage lines. Charlie became known as Whip. One-Eyed Charlie was known as the one of the toughest, roughest, and most daring of stagecoach drivers. It was a difficult job, and Charlie was proud to be a Whip. Now, for those of us that no longer take stages, uh, there are lots of these terms from the day that the Emperor and I used to take stagecoaches. Oh, but you like to travel by boat, right? Boat, by rail, ships. yes indeed. Yes, mm -hmm. often to Sacramento. Yes, I know all that way and the waterways were quite the way to get around the Bay Area. Indeed. But inland, the stage lines would develop. Now, a whip received a high salary for those times of $125 plus room and board. Now, Charlie's skills as a stagecoach driver was well known and respected by all. Charlie, however, had a secret. Hmm. Charlie had been born Charlotte Darkhurst. Now, changing her name to survive a profession that was a man's world. The truth was revealed upon Charlie's death and the undertaker was pre preparing Charlie's body for the funeral, mm -hmm. and the community all came together to have the funeral. But the discovery was made by the undertaker, and Charlie had been born, and living the life of a man was born a woman. Hmm. And unfortunately, this would not happen until the end of Charlie's life. Parkhurst actually, though, an interesting case in point of history, unknowingly, Parkhurst could claim a national first after voting on Election Day, November 3rd, 1868. Charlie was probably the first woman to cast a ballot in any election. It wouldn't be until 52 years later that the right to vote was guaranteed to women by the 19th Amendment. Now, Your Majesty, I know you have supported women's right to vote. Eh? Oh, the yes, suffragists. indeed. Yes. yes, I have always and yes. always stick up for the underdog. Well, I tell you, peculiar lives happen and we do not write history. History writes itself, as the Emperor and I always say. Mm -hmm. And that's a very interesting story there. Now, if you go to Soquel, down by Santa Cruz in the post office, I don't know if it's still up because I've been staying in place, sheltering in place, I haven't gotten out of the house for months. 
but there is a post office there that the fifth grade class in public school did a whole mural of Charlie Parkhurst oh. on the stage. Well, we must go see it. Yes, sometime. have you seen it before? I have not, no. What well, it's well it worth a visit there, I would think. I would think so. Mm -hmm. Now, I was, I was about to say, I want to introduce a special guest today, oh, Your Majesty. Well, coming from the country western scene, we are going to have today that famous, infamous, I should actually say, country western singer, Kitty Litter. Oh boy, I can't wait. Gladly walk across the desert with no shoes upon my feet to share with you the last bite of bread I had to eat. I would swim out to save you in a sea of broken dreams when all your hopes are sinking. Let me show you what love means. Love can build a bridge Between your heart and mine Love can build a bridge Don't you think it's time Don't you think it's time I would whisper love so loudly Every heart could understand That love and only love Can join the tribes of men I would give my heart's desire So that you might see The first step is to realize That it all began with you and me Love can build a bridge between your heart and mine. Love can build a bridge. Don't you think it's time? Don't, Don't you think, think it's time? time.
love can build a bridge Even if it's the Golden Gate Bridge With the fog Love can build a bridge Oh my, that was lovely. Thank that you so was much. Wonderful, Countess. Yes, thank she you, looks Kitty familiar, Litter. Though. I don't know where they come from. Mm. You know? No. Yes, indeed. Well, love can build a bridge, so I would suggest, Your Majesty, that all of our people, our neighbors and friends and family, remain intact and. Uh, work together, you know, to build those bridges and Indeed. we'll get through this epidemic as bad as it can be. So wear your mask if you go out in public and that sort of thing. Any other tips you want to give your majesty? Well, just to stay safe and stay healthy. And of course, uh, practice social distancing. Don't take unproven cures. And yes, wear your mask. And I'm sorry, crochet masks and mesh masks and lace masks don't count. You're making a mockery of it all. Well, I want to say something about upcoming episodes. Now, I love the movies, and one of the chances that we have in San Francisco with Sheltering in Place is we have a long history of having many different movies filmed here on location. Indeed. And possibly. also the history of, you know, from the Magic Lantern shows of Europe of the early days of the 1890s all the way up until the time of the invention of the motion pictures. I mean, what are your favorite films that are done here in San Francisco? The book by Dashiell Hammond of Maltese Falcon is one of my favorites with Humphrey yes, Bogart yes, yes. and all that. It was all filmed here. So next time I come to join you, Your Majesty, we will be talking about movies filmed in San Francisco, and some of the enjoyable history of filmmaking. Well, that should be fun. And it's just a, a little helpful hint, maybe to stimulate all of the folks that are sheltering in place at home, and it's a great chance to catch up on your movies. Exactly. Yes, besides reading. And you can find the original book and then, you know, see the actual movie that was made from it. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes the books are better than the actual movie. Oh, we used to have so much fun pointing out the movie locations to our guests on our tours. Yes, we yes. We love doing that, so we'll be sharing some of that with you next yes. week. Yes, yes indeed. Anything else, Countess? I think that's about it. Well, Au revoir. Thank you for uh, tuning in today. Now, we have started accepting donations. The information is right here. If you do Patreon, that is a monthly donation. We've also put up our uh, PayPal link so you can make a one-time donation. We would like to thank our generous donors. We couldn't do it without you. And so, that wraps it up for this edition. And until we see you again, be kind to one another. And have a gracious good day. Au revoir.